Hey guys, welcome back to Fix It Friday, the weekly YouTube series where we talk about video game console repairs, mods, and restorations. And for this week, we have the Sony PlayStation 2, and this is the fat model. Um, so these are very, very, very common. This is the most widely sold video game console of all time. Um, but nowadays, uh, you know, you can easily run into systems that don't work. And normally the biggest problem is that the laser doesn't read um, one or more of the different discs that a PlayStation 2 can handle. So PlayStations can handle PS1 games. They can also handle these blue PS2 CD games. And then there's the most common, which is the PS2 DVD games. This one has issues with reading discs. And so what I'm going to do is go through... Uh, the way that I handle repairs for these. These are actually a lot harder than the Slims. With the with the PS2 Slims, you can just buy a laser, a replacement, just drop it in and be done. With this one, there's a little bit more involved, and uh, there's no necessary guarantee of success. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to show you guys everything that I know. All right, let's get started. All right, so the first thing we got to do is just disassemble the system. It's extremely easy. Uh, I use a little green <clears throat> spudger tool and just pick off all of these little protector things and uh, there's always six here and then sometimes there's two here it depends on which model of PS2 fat you guys have um, there's seriously something like 25 different hardware revisions they all look the same on the outside but then when you open them up you'll find that there's differences Looks like someone's been inside of this one before, because there's two missing screws over here. Actually, three. But that's fine, I have spares. So you have long screws, usually these four are long screws, and then these four are shorts. Okay, so before you open up the lid, um, if a system is brand new or unopened ever before, there's going to be a warranty sticker that most of the time is over here. All you got to do is use a tool like this to just kind of peel it off, and that's it. So to remove this lid, what you do is you kind of lift up from the back and kind of scoot it forward away from the, the disk drive, and then you rotate like this. And do so carefully because there is actually a ribbon cable right over here. So you can work potentially with the console like this, but I find that really annoying. So what I do is I take my little spudger tool and I just kind of pull this out. And now I can put this off to the side and I just have the unit right here. All right, so the next thing we gotta do is remove the top of this drive. And there's four screws that hold it in place. Depending on the model you have, they may be in different spots. Most of the time, they're up here. Okay, so now in order to gain access to the insides, we can just simply lift this off, and there's a little magnet that goes over here and that makes the, um, the disc stay in place while it spins. And to gain access to the inside so that we can better access the laser, we're gonna use the power button. So I have the system powered on, and so we can just hit eject. And now it opens up. And then I'm gonna flip this little switch and power everything off so that way it stays open. All right, so I wanted to give you a close up of how the laser um, looks. And there's a lot of variability in PS2 fat disc drives, but they all share some similarities. So you're gonna have it on two rails over here and it goes back and forth on these rails. And uh, what I wanna do is to remove the laser, I'm gonna take this little screw here and and remove it. And that's actually the only thing you need to touch. Okay. Now that that's done, I can pull this whole rail out, and then this guy is not screwed into place. You can just take it, and we can just pull this guy out. And now if you flip the laser upside down, you see that there are these two bales, these black uh, things over here. I'm gonna zoom in real close and show you how I take those out. Okay, so all you have to do is just push down with your fingernail or with a tool on both sides, like that. And then you just pull on the ribbon cable. And it just comes right out. 
All right, so now I have the laser out and I'm gonna just compare it really quickly to the replacement. So I know that this replacement, it's a KHS 400C and I'll have a link in the description for what type of laser you should search for. And I know it says Sony on it, but I can guarantee you this is not made by Sony. This is a, you know, Chinese knockoff. Sony no longer makes these. Um, and so really your only option for a replacement are these Chinese knockoff lasers. Uh, with the method I use, I find that most of them are successful now. Uh, in the past, before I didn't know these techniques, I found that actually most of these didn't work. Um, so these are fine, but be, be warned that not all of them work. Um, most of them, though, will work with this technique. Okay, so you'll notice when you're looking at the two of them that there are some differences. So there's this arm, which connects it up to a worm screw that's missing. There's also like a little tiny screw over here and that adjusts the height on the other rail. So we gotta take those parts off of the original laser and we're gonna just transplant them onto the new one. So all you gotta do is just remove this screw. It's actually very easy to, to do this. And then you just place it like, like so. Silly of me. It's actually like this. There we go. Okay. And for this little guy over here, this is like a hex screw and it's really tiny. And what I've found is that you can just get these tiny little screwdrivers, the kind you get in like glasses cleaning kits or, or repair kits, and they're small enough. So you can just twist and pull this out. And now I've got my tiny little screw here, and I'm just gonna put it in. And you put it in most of the way. You don't have to go all the way. So I like usually put it all the way in, and then just turn it back a smidge. And that's enough. That's a, that's a screw that you may have to adjust later on during the installation. But for now, having it like most of the way in is gonna be fine. That might be all we need to do. All right, so the next thing you're gonna maybe have to do is um, remove an anti-static solder point that these lasers have. So um, with the KHS 400C, you see these three separate pads here? Sometimes these lasers are shipped with a giant blob of solder that connects all of those together. That That's intended to keep this laser safe during shipping. Uh, sometimes you buy them and the, the anti-static pad has been cleaned up, like mine has, where it's three separate pads. So if yours has one big blob of solder there, all you need to do is just take a soldering iron that's clean and just wipe it across that area and you'll pick up all that extra solder and separate those three points. Or if you really need to, you can use a, uh, a little bit of solder braid to clean that up. But yeah, since mine came shipped like this, uh, I don't have to do anything. All right, so the reinstallation of this is really easy. Uh, it's just basically going in reverse. So I'm gonna start by just lowering these two bales like I did beforehand. And you just rotate your ribbon and push it in like that and then usually I'll just tack in one side here and then try to tack in the other like so and now the ribbon cable is installed so at this point we're gonna take the you see there's like that opening there on the left we're gonna take it and put it onto the rail and then we're gonna bring in our second rail and lock it down like that. Okay, so now all we have to do is just secure it in place. And now this laser is installed. Before we close it up though, there's a couple different steps that we need to take in order to improve the operation of this laser. So um, these two rails over here, they actually were lubricated at the factory, and so that allows the laser to kind of travel up and down smoothly. This one's not too bad, but I usually come in here and I make sure I add some lubricant to these rails. I use lithium grease. And then also, if there's some dust lying around, I like to try to get that cleaned out. This particular one is pretty decent, so we should be okay. But, uh, but yeah, I'm gonna show you how I apply the lithium grease to these rails. Okay, so I've got my lithium grease right here. So it comes like in a spray can and just kind of spray some onto a paper towel. And then I just kind of dab a uh, little Q-tip on it just so I have a little bit on the Q-tip. And you know, you don't wanna go crazy here. Just like a little bit on 
both rails. And then I'm just going to push down here. I'm going to add a little bit more onto my Q-tip. Just kind of go up and down both rails here. So now that's all lubricated, and then I'll, I'll take the I'll take the laser and just kind of move it up and down a few times just to make sure it's nice and smooth. And yeah, it's moving really nicely right now. All right, so uh, the next thing I'm going to do is close it up, and then uh, we're going to use a piece of homebrew software to flash the EEPROM so that we can be guaranteed that the EEPROM that's installed on this PS2 is compatible with this laser. All right, so I have finished reassembling the laser, you know, tray and all that kind of stuff. And so the next step that we're going to do is we're going to be flashing a new EEPROM onto this PS2. So what I've learned is that basically someone created a homebrew program that lets you flash new EEPROMs onto the PS2 and that makes the PS2 way more compatible with these Chinese lasers. It also means that if you have a, PH, uh, a PS2 that uses a different laser other than the KHS 400C, you can buy a KHS 400C and install it successfully. Um, those other there's like three or four other versions of the PS2 fat laser and those are much harder to come by and they're way more expensive so if you can get away with using a 400C it's way better um, alright so what I've done is I've uh, put in a memory card and this memory card has homebrew installed on it so it allows me to access this special program and then I, I have the program here uh, I'll have a link in the description for where you can download it and uh, it's just on this flash drive and it's installed I mean it's inserted into that USB port that's over there alright so we're gonna go ahead and uh, turn on the system let me just move to the TV real quick here okay so we're gonna boot up the PS2 it's gonna have a different kind of flash, uh, splash screen because again we're running homebrew here and uh, what I'll do is link to a guide for setting up homebrew. That's really kind of outside the scope of this uh, of this tutorial. But um, but yeah, what what you do is you go to you launch elf, and this is basically like a file browser for the PS2. And then you hit circle, and then you scroll down to where it says mass over here, and you hit circle. And then uh, it's going to load the contents of your SD card. And uh, I have this SD card formatted with FAT32, and um, basically I, I need to just copy over this program called LensChanger.elf. So I'm going to hit X to mark it, and then I'm going to hit R1 to bring up this menu, and then Circle to copy. And now I'm going to go back here and go to MC0, this is memory card slot 0, which is this guy down here, and I'm going to scroll down to boot. And then here I'm going to hit R1 again, and I'm going to hit uh, circle to paste. Okay, and that's done. Alright, so now it's on the memory card. So, okay, so we're going to start up the PS2 again. And we're going to go back to ulaunch.elf and uh, hit circle for file browser, circle on memory card zero. We're going to go down to boot here and hit circle again. And then now we're going to go to lens changer and hit circle to run the program. Okay, so it starts up like this. You just hit X twice to get to the main menu. And now you can pick a different firmware to flash onto the PS2. Uh, before we do that though, we're going to make a backup of the existing EEPROM. So to do that, you press the R1 button. Um, it, it won't show this screen if you don't have a copy. I already have a copy of this one, but um, basically it'll say, you know, do you want to make a backup of the EEPROM? And uh, you hit start to say yes. And there we go. So now I made a backup. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick my correct laser. So this is the KHS 400C. This is the one that I've already installed. So now I'm going to hit X and I'm going to say, okay, do you want to reprogram the EEPROM for this laser? And now we're going to say start. And there we go. That's it. Very simple. All right. So now I'm going to power things down and uh, remove all the homebrew stuff and we're going to test out some discs. All right, so there's just one other thing I'd like to comment on um, about repairing PS2 fats, and, and it has to do with this particular gear over here. 
So this gear adjusts the height of the entire laser assembly. And sometimes when I do these laser replacements, I find that maybe two out of the three discs read, and maybe one doesn't. Maybe it spins, but it doesn't exactly read. And so in order to kind of address that, sometimes you may have to make some minor adjustments to this gear here. So what I like to do is just take like, you know, a flat tipped screwdriver and I can just kind of go and, and move this gear just like a small amount and then do a quick test with a game and then see if that improves things or not. You don't want to make very large changes with that. And again, don't touch that if all three laser, if all three types of games are working. If those are working, then you're done. But every now and then you might have to make an adjustment there and I figured I would just uh, mention it in this video. For this particular unit, I didn't have to do anything, so I'm not going to mess with that, but uh, just so that you guys know for, for um, if you attempt this yourself. All right, so I've got the DVD running and this is, you know, good old Grand Theft Auto 3 and uh, it loaded up without any issue. So, so now I'm just gonna go ahead and test the other two discs. All right, so I've got a blue CD here. And this is Harry Potter and uh, yeah, it's loading up. Game seems to be playing. I'll test it out, of course, but it seems to be fine. All right, now we're gonna try PS1. All right, so I just tried loading a PS1 disc and that is also working perfectly. So now we are three for three. This PS2 is totally repaired. All right, so uh, hopefully you guys find this guide helpful. And um, if you do, then I'd really appreciate it if you could give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I'll have repair videos like this out every Friday. And uh, yeah, thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys again next time. Bye.